Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time finding my channel because this is my first Dogecoin video, welcome. Um, hopefully you enjoy. Not, I'm not sure how big the Doge community is on YouTube. I haven't really done any research on it or anything like that, but um, I just wanted to like poke my head in here and kind of say what my thoughts were on Dogecoin at the moment um, and just kind of compare it to itself, to be honest with you, and what's going on. Um, what you're looking at right now on the chart is on the right is the daily chart um, ranging from like May when it had its run up like late April, early May, all the way to where we are now, which is obviously early November. It's November 1st today. And then on the left is the eight-hour chart <laughs> um, of early February through April 12th. You might be asking yourself, why did you choose the eight-hour versus the daily chart? Well, um... In my opinion, what's happening right now with Dogecoin is it is repeating the same cycle, and I'm going to show you an example of that um, using rectangles, sim simple rectangle tool on TradingView. Um, and I want to first shout out uh, a Twitter account that kind of put me on this. Oop, there go my DMs on screen. Don't want that. But his name is Rico's Trade. For some reason, I can't click his profile, so give me one second. Um, he put me onto this. We were in this in in the same Discord group together, um, and he showed me this Doge cycle theory. So go make sure you check him out. Um, he's been following it pretty closely, uh, doing really good work over there. And me and him, we talk in Discord almost every day now. So uh, he's a good guy. So go check him out. But anyway, um, just so that I can point out the way that I perceive it is um, you have here in February the run up and the run down, we'll call it. Or we can we can do it here even. And I took the wicks off the candles just for uh, just to make it a little less noisy. Uh, we can put the wicks on in a second. You have this U shape here. Make that blue. Um Sorry. I'd say that this is here. Yeah. And then this is this in yellow. And then you have this big rundown. I think that that's just one. Well, it's this big rundown here. So maybe we'll make this one pink. You'll start to see the vision. And then that's here as well. And then, again, keep in mind, um, obviously these are two different regions of the chart, so they shouldn't... Um, the fact that I'm evil, even able to make these sorts of connections should be the most telling part of this video rather than them being exactly candle for candle the same and remember these are different time frames that i'm looking at these charts as well so one of them is an eight hour chart and the other is that that played out well the eight hour chart played out over the course of like three months this one is playing out over the course of like six so if there are some uh some disconnections in price action that's okay i'd say um for the for the purposes of this video um go here this this you and normally i do regular technical analysis on the channel for you guys who are back you know that but um i just thought that i would share what i am seeing with you guys in real time especially the returning viewers just because you know i got i want you guys to be clued in on what i'm seeing as much as i possibly can um have this region here Let's use a color we haven't used yet. Uh, that's literally the one we just used. Wow, Dave. Real smart guy. You are. Oh, that's way too close. Maybe we'll just start over. No, orange. Yeah, we haven't used orange yet. There you go. Um, yeah, so this is pretty, pretty creepy stuff. 
And uh, me and Rico, our opinions on where we are in this cycle do differ a little bit. So again, I I, uh, I say that it's a good idea to go check him out and see what his take on, on, on this whole thing is. But this is just me doing it in real time, just so that, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think that these two sections... Okay, we're going to start over now. I'm out of colors. Yellow. I think that these two are the same. That's just my opinion. This is where me and Rico differ a little bit. Again, you'll have to check him out to see what his opinion is. And then, boom, you can see... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a pleasant surprise. You can see that, uh, and I mean pleasant, you can see that based on this analysis, we'll make this blue so it kind of starts the trend over, that it would appear that Dogecoin is, is pretty close um, if it were to repeat itself as it has repeated itself, as we can see here, if it were to repeat itself again, uh, it it has to be relatively close to, to a move um, if this cycle is to repeat. Again, this isn't financial advice. I'm not telling you that um, this is guaranteed to happen. That's clearly not the case. I would never make a make. I would never like tell anybody that they should do something based on this sort of information. But in my opinion. Um, to ignore it would also be kind of crazy. So I just feel like I should be letting people know um, because this is what I do. You know, I analyze charts. I post them on YouTube. Um, and if I'm watching it, uh, then, you know, I should I should be telling my audience about it in my opinion. But, yeah, so um, I would say that maybe it's not so crazy to suggest that uh, perhaps... Doge could be going into another leg. Now, what does that mean? Uh, you know, like how high can it go? Things of that nature. Um, well, Rico also sort of gave me a guideline for that. And again, um, not financial advice. And, you know, Rico, as well as I, are we're just two guys on the internet. So make your own decisions and stuff like that, obviously. Don't make a decision based on some guy that you found on YouTube or Twitter or something like that. That's not probably not a good idea most of the time. But I would say, but, but ignore all that that I just said and now listen to me. I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want. Be responsible. Don't do no crazy shit. Okay? Because I'm not going to, I'm I'm not... You're not suing me, all right? Because I didn't tell you to do this. I just told I didn't tell you to do anything. I just told you what I was seeing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that uh, it's possible that there's going to be some sort of FOMO event that occurs. Maybe some sort of catalyst comes out of nowhere and surprises us all, or something like that. And and maybe uh, that dollar price range gets back on the on the board, and and uh, breaking it in this case causes some sort of FOMO. See. Last time that Doge ran, I will say this just from a a basic standpoint, I kind of knew that it wouldn't go to a dollar, and even if it did go to a dollar, it would be a pretty epic crash. And the reason that I I knew that is because I could feel the steam, you know, I could feel the the price kind of slowing down. We'll go full screen now. Um, I could feel the price kind of slowing down whenever it um was getting up into this. This like, you know, like it pumped up to 40 and it was already super crazy. It comes back down, tests like 20 cents again, and it bounces up and then it goes all the way to 70. You could feel the the overextension, uh, the price, the, the gain slowing down and, and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, man, if this thing makes it to, to a dollar, it's, it's going to be a big hard crash, right? So perhaps um, what it needed was this sort of accumulation. And perhaps somebody is steering this thing or whatever. I don't know. I'm not here to make allegations. I'm just saying, like, it's really similar, so that's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, uh, what this looks like to me is a, is a big, long accumulation period after a distribution period. Um, so I'd say, like, you know, 
price. This is like institutional selling or something like that. You know, people taking profit because they had massive profits. And then generally speaking, just to simplify, um, this region of the chart would appear to me like an accumulation so that then you can have another run up. And most moves in, in, uh, in most markets are institutional for the most part. I know that uh, Doge comes off as a retail play, but I will say that it definitely seems like this is an, an institutional accumulation. If you're not familiar with Wyckoff method, I definitely uh, recommend looking into that Wyckoff theory. If we were to do like a basic Wyckoff analysis on this, um, I would say that it's pretty clear that this is a selling climax. This, an automatic reaction. This, the sell test in phase B. We broke the bottom of the trading range in order to establish a new bottom of the trading range, in my opinion. Um, and then we have an automatic reaction in phase B to that sell-off. To me, this looks like a last point of support. And then we're, we'll look at volume as well, which is really important to the Wyckoff method. Um, I'd say that this is the top of your trading range. Right? So basically, the idea is that bullish institutions, I mean institutions in general, will buy the bottoms here, cause a rally, and then they'll sell the tops, cause the price to go down, they'll buy the bottom again, cause a rally. Um, and typically, uh, if you break it down into... You would break it down into a few sections. So this would be phase A. Say this is phase B in its entirety. Oh, make sure I make my lines nice and even. Um, you had your last point of support in phase C, in my opinion, which is kind of just a middling confirmation of support. And then, like, in that confirmation of support, you can see that there's a general trend that's building up, right? Price trend. So this kind of makes this the bottom in this case, and then you're, you're following this trend line. Um, typically here, what you would see, you know, you're coming back now, you're retesting these, these regions. Last point of support. Um, and, I mean, this could have been a sign of strength. So you could even make your trading range like go like this, and then, oh, you broke the top of the trading range. That's a sign of strength. Basically, this is bullish confirmation for institutions. And then what you're having now is a backup. And a last point of support. So this could be a sign of strength. And look, what we can do, I'm going to do this after, too. I'm going to do a um, Wyckoff analysis of the last one and see see what my thoughts are there. This is the eight hour chart, it doesn't really matter. Um, obviously it's the same price action, it's just broken down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so what I would expect, just like if I wasn't looking at it from a cycle perspective, is I would expect the price to maybe, if I, if I didn't know anything else about Dogecoin, I would expect it to have some price action like this. Like maybe it would it would trade sideways a little bit and then it would eventually break the trading range and then that would be like your your markup. Um and then typically markup is gonna kind of destroy this this distribution range. Like you're gonna like it was previous resistance. But if institutions see that you can break this range um with some strength, right? Some volume comes in, retail gets excited, they start buying uh, then institutions will let the markup occur, basically. Like, they'll let the price go up to a certain point, and then they'll look for a sell-off point, like, where they where they want to test liquidity, basically. So what they do is they would sell off, cause panic, right, and then see when retail re-enters, when they can get some new money into the play, and then maybe that would be, like, your last move. And that's why you saw, you've seen these moves like this, so... You see this big rocket ship occur, and then they sell off. They they wait to see if uh they well they buy this bottom right here, and then see if retail is gonna join the party, and then maybe they'll sell off here, buy again, and then they'll let it go up again, and then they'll sell the top, and then uh, cause this this further selling based on volume. Um, let's do the volume analysis as well. 
so you guys see what I'm talking about. Um, and this is why also it's it's pretty important to note volume, especially when analyzing Wyckoff. I don't know why the fuck this is. Oh, sorry about my language. Um, I don't know why this is so like small. Oh yeah, this is the calculated chart. Oh man. Maybe I'll do another Doge chart. Give me a second so we can look at this. Just look at it. Um, yeah, Dogecoin Tether. This should not be an estimated chart, so it should have more accurate volume. Yeah, so see on this last run here how volume was very high here for like April 15th, 16th peak, like right here. But look, oh, you can actually see the weakness coming in. Look at this. So, so you created a, you got your peak on April 16th, max volume, right? They sold off. They bought here to get retail back enticed. And look at how, how much lower the volume was. Yeah, let's, let's make the volume relative. Sorry. It'll make it easier to see. So you can see that yeah the volume was still high but it was much lower um while the price was still going up which is not a good sign um that's very bearish and then you had this peak here and then look at look at what the volume was like here oh here so where are we at may 8th may 9th boom um so the volume didn't even come in until until there were sellers. You see those those red volume candles? That's because the price was going down. That means that it was selling volume. Um and so and this is even lower than here, which is very very bearish. Um and so that was a good signal that we were going to go into this downtrend. Um but alternatively, like if you if you look at the volume now, right? If we do like a full Volume analysis here. No volume. No volume. This entire time until whoop, they cause a little sell spike, right? And then you and then you see that spike in volume. To me, what this means is institutions broke this this uh this resistance region and they broke it and they saw that some volume come in came in. This is also a good signal. You can actually see this happen over here as well. You see this? flat line of volume, literally nothing, and then boop. Institutions likely go, oh, people are going to buy if we pump this. Let's go, right? Um, so just some interesting stuff to note. Uh, how far are we into this video? Yeah, we can knock out a quick uh, Wyckoff analysis on this. Let's just do that right quick, so... Hopefully you're enjoying the video. If you are, make sure you smash the like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, um, like the video, comment on the video. I also have a Discord down below. Uh, Discord link, completely free to join. Um, and uh, my Twitter, if you want to follow me on Twitter and maybe tell me what you think there. Uh, again, ignore volume on this chart because this chart is a is an estimated chart, uh, but it's more it's more for price action. Because you get the longer term price, because they didn't, they weren't charting Dogecoin as far back as this chart goes. Just put it that way. All right. So if we did the same thing, we would have a selling climax. Basically, bears are in control. Sell test in phase B. This is your automatic reaction to that selling climax. Um, automatic reaction in phase B. And then let's establish the bottom of our trading range so that we understand whether this was a spring or not. There you go. And then this is the top of your trading range now. Probably do something like this. All right, and then yeah, so this is the last point of support. Now, um, Rico, if you're if you're not if you don't remember earlier, I said um, to follow this guy at Rico's Trade 
on Twitter. Make sure you go follow him. Uh, really good guy. He's actually shown me an interesting way to look at it. Just look at it. And, uh, and that is, you can see if you draw this trend line like this, that this might actually act as a spring based on the trend. And if you're not familiar with spring, a spring is typically the reversal period in a chart. Um, let me go back to this volume uh, volume chart just right quick. So see how the price sold off here and volume just was still dead? Um, this big sell-off like this with no volume is a very bullish signal. And institutions will uh, will just buy this up and reset the trend and cause cause a new uptrend. Typically, that's that's uh, what a spring is. So, it's possible that this was as well a spring if you base it on a trend line, and then that would mean that this is a test, and then this would have been your sign of strength where you broke the trade trading range, and then you come back and you test the top of the trading range. Um, with the last point of support, so this is basically uh, institutions getting their last their last bite on the on the stock, or in this case a coin, um, and then causing the markup. And we'll compare that to what we have here. Uh, pretty undeniable similarity. Um, so yeah, so for me personally, I'm pretty excited about Doge. I think that um, here in the short term, you're gonna see you're gonna see some upside. Uh, maybe Doge will be on the news and all that stuff again. And um, for Doge holders or investors or traders or whatever uh, that are bulls, it might be a good time. So yeah, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash a like. Make sure you follow Rico on on Twitter. Here I'll make sure that it's nice and bold so you guys don't miss it. Go check him out. Tell him that Dave sent you. Um, and join my Discord. Completely free, down low. Um, if you want to use TradingView, which is the app I use to do all these charts, it's completely free. I do have a referral link down below, so if you ever go premium, uh, I get a small kickback and commission for that. Uh, so that's appreciated. And other than that, have a good rest of your day. And uh, yeah, we're going to be keeping up with Dogecoin for sure. Um, and yeah. Have a good rest of your day. Take it easy.